I am grateful for good health. I am grateful that I have the volunteer work that I have. You know, as a um, volunteer hospital chaplain, multi-faith chaplain, I get to love people. I get to, I get to love people for hours at a time, and I come home feeling deeply satisfied. Welcome to Midlife Dialogues, where we are continuing our conversation with Joanne Garland, who has been traveling like crazy in these last five years, especially with the travel company Road Scholar, which used to be known as Elder Hostel. In our previous episode, Joanne and I talked about some of her trips and what they have been like. Today, in this episode number two, we're going to talk about embracing one's life. Joanne, one way you have definitely embraced your life, as we've been talking about, is through travel. What made you decide to do that? Why all these trips and what is it like traveling so much at this age? I think I just always assumed that I would travel when I got older and I've look forward to it. I travel because I'm curious about places that I haven't seen before. I want to satisfy my curiosity. Let, let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, that's a good answer. Yeah. Did you grow up in a family that traveled? My family did not travel. Uh, my parents grew up in the depression. We didn't take vacations. I mean, when I got in high school, sometimes we would go to Cape Cod for a few days. <laughs> that's about it. Or go to grandma's, you know, spend the summer at grandma's house in upstate New York. But it was not a traveling family. Do you mind if we talk about about your age, how old how old you are now? I'm 77. How do you feel about your life at 77 and how you're living it? I feel very good. I am grateful for good health. I work at it. I am grateful that I have the volunteer work that I have because I find it so fulfilling and joyful. You know, as a um, volunteer hospital chaplain, multi faith chaplain, I get to love people. I get to I get to love people for hours at a time, and I come home feeling deeply satisfied. So I have meaningful work to do. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. And then, and that coupled with all this travel you're doing and the learning, that just must be very satisfying. It just sounds it, wonderful. It's deeply satisfying. Yeah. And a lot of fun. Would the child you used to be, be surprised at what you're doing now at this point in your life? The child that I used to be didn't want to travel, oh, to be wow. honest. It was scary. You know, they speak other languages in, in different places. I thought I could always go to a place where they spoke English and then I would be okay, but anything else would be scary. I was terrified to go to Italy. And so when uh, my travel companion and I had a chance to go to Italy with someone we knew and trusted uh, in a small group, you know, I got over my fear of Italy. And I had always, always wanted to go to Pompeii since I was nine years old. And I had to see Pompeii. And when Travel Buddy and I were in Italy on our two-week road trip after the, the tour, we drove right by the exit to Pompeii on our way to the Amalfi Coast. And I said, there's Pompeii. It's right there. It's right there. She was not interested in going to a place where... Lots of people had died. Oh. How depressing, you know? That's not why I want to go there. I want to see how people lived, you know? So did you go? Eventually. That was really our first trip together. And it was a shakedown period. And um, we weren't going to travel together after that, you know? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, because, the you know, you have to get used to each other. But then that wore off. And I got to tell you, coming back on the plane from Italy, the flight attendants were pushing this airline credit card. And they said, you know, you sign up for it, you get like 60,000 miles. That's enough to go to Europe and back. And I'm frugal. And I already had an airline credit card. And they said, well, you can have a second one, too. It's with a different bank. So I had these smiles. And I woke up one morning in January and I said, I can do this myself now. You know, the drive from the Rome airport to Pompeii is only three hours. It's all highway. We did it once. I can do it alone. And so I made the arrangements, got an Airbnb for five days in Pompeii, and I went alone. Oh, good for you. And, <laughs> and I was you fine. I was fine. And I went into the ruins at Pompeii three days in a row. Nice. I mean, I was fascinated to see how people lived. And I climbed Mount Vesuvius, okay? Wow. And I had sore legs at this point. I had two two trekking poles and, um, you know, every step ached. But I got to the top of Mount Vesuvius and looked down into that crater and said, darn you. <laughs> I went to Herculaneum. I did that myself. So I guess in a way, the child in me always wanted to go to Pompeii, but just couldn't figure out how to do it because it was scary and they speak Italian over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you had to sum up your these recent years of all this travel and adventure that you've been doing in three words, what might they be? I'm becoming satisfied. I'm is... becoming satisfied because my travel friend and I have reached a lot of our travel goals. We've fulfilled a lot of our wishes and it's starting to feel really good to stay home more. Oh, 
it feels good to be at home. There isn't this urge like I have to get out. I have to go places. It's like I've been to all these places. Isn't it nice to just sit home and not have to plan everything? Yes, we did seven programs in one year. And, you know, now maybe one or two or maybe three. And that's okay. Oh, that's so. But I feel satisfied. I've gone so many of the places that I've always wanted to go. Right. Although Egypt is still calling. Oh, isn't that great? Yeah. That's wonderful. I'm sure a lot of people don't get to the point where they can say say that. Yeah. That's really neat. Do you have a philosophy about living your life that you say out loud or you think to yourself or a saying that you repeat to yourself? There is a quotation that I came across years ago. I guess it's a famous quotation. Um, it's on my, my office wall over there. It says, the entire ocean is affected by a pebble. And the way I take that, my love and my smile can have ripples. I've always believed in international friendship, always. If I make friends from many places, from many different countries, the world becomes a smaller place and a friendlier and more loving place. No, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm still at this point in touch with my college roommate who lives in Jerusalem now. We Zoom once a week. She was my roommate because I, I wrote to the housing office freshman year and I said, could I have a roommate who's from out of state or, or from another country? And so they sent her to me and, you know, we are just so happy with our differences and our, and our joy and our continued friendship. Oh, that's lovely. Last question. What advice would you give to others who want to embrace their lives more, whether in big ways or small? I would say... Live simply and frugally. It's a way to be prosperous is to, you know, live within our means. I don't have to have a fancy car. I don't have to live in a mansion. I don't feel that I have to go into debt to acquire things. I am perfectly happy bargain hunting for clothing. I don't need to go out to dinner every week. If you live simply and you don't have expensive needs, then you have more disposable income as a cushion for life's unforeseen. You have fewer worries because you're not always trying to keep up. And life is more joyful and, and more peaceful. Be loving and do some kind of service that's meaningful and give away 10% of what comes in. Mm. You know, I am a tither. I release 10% of what comes in and what comes back gets multiplied. So I'd say live in joy, live in joy, be kind to others, do something that's meaningful that helps to uplift others and forget about the ego. That's not important. Oh, that's great. Don't wait too long if you want to climb Mount Fuji because the body doesn't hold out quite like it did when we were 30. <laughs> so do it now. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank you so much, Joanne. I have really enjoyed talking with you. And thanks, everybody, for listening to Midlife Dialogues, and we'll see you next time.